And now today's word at the Key Church. Well, good morning Key Church. I uh, love to just bring the word to you again. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, I pray for your presence in this place. I pray that your word would go out and would achieve that for which you purposed it to achieve. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Well, folks, the title of my message this morning is Comfort Ye My People. And, you know, I have a pastor's heart, so often I see people are stressed and people are struggling, and I just feel to speak a word of comfort, but that's maybe just from my heart. But this morning, I believe that God is saying to me, comfort my people. So we're going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 25. Let me go over, I pray thee, and see the good land that is beyond the Jordan, that goodly mountain and Lebanon. But Jehovah was wroth with me for your sakes, and hearkeneth not unto me. And Jehovah said unto me, let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. So Moses was basically begging God. God, please, the uh, Jewish people are going to cross the Jordan. They're going to go into this beautiful promised land, and I'm not going to see it. And what was God's response to him? He said, let it suffice thee, speak no more unto me of this matter. And folks, I'm sure many of you have prayed over many things and have felt that you haven't got an answer. It's it maybe the same as the scripture, like God just said, let it suffice thee. Stop speaking to me about this. Because God was not prepared at that time to uh, do anything uh, about it for whatever reason. But we're going to look at this today. So last week, uh, was the Sabbath of mourning, the destruction of the two temples, what we call Tish B'Av. And so, uh, again, have you, like Moses, pleaded with God for the situations in your life, for the sad things that happened in your life? And as we celebrated Tish B'Av, we thought of the destruction of the two temples, and God's answer was just, let it suffice, speak no more, or in today's language, we can say it, the subject is closed, my friend, full stop, over and out. And so some people have been praying for their marriage and it just felt like it wasn't getting better, it was getting worse, or your business, or the place where you employed, the problems just continued, your children were still uh, giving you a hard time. Um, and we just feel like, God, where are you? And it's like God is speaking to us like he spoke to his friend Moses. He said, let it suffice. Stop speaking to me about that. Uh, because in God's time, he will do what he's going to do. Psalm 30 verse 5. For his anger is but for a moment. Folks, God was angry at Moses for the, the sin of the people and for Moses' sin. And so he says... For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry in the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Sometimes there's a reason why God is not listening to your prayer. Sometimes there's a reason why you're waiting on God and it seems like nothing is happening. So, folks, uh, last Saturday, as we celebrated Tishba Av, um, it was the uh, celebration of sorrow, the celebration of weeping, if you can call it a celebration, maybe I should find a better word for it. But yesterday, uh, Sabbath is called Tuba Av. It's different to Tishba Av. And it's a very special celebration. And I'm so excited that we are in this period of Tuba Av. So, uh, after Tuba Av, it's just seven weeks, and then we come to the Jewish holiday of Rosh Hashanah, which means head of the year, or you could maybe say in English, Happy New Year, 
Rosh Hashanah, and it speaks of the return of the Messiah. And I believe Jesus will return at the Feast of Trumpets, folks. Why wouldn't he? He's, he's fulfilled every other feast perfectly. Why wouldn't he return with the sound of the trumpet on the day of the trumpet? It just makes good sense to me. But I don't know which year, and the Bible says we won't know. But what I do know, folks, is that Jesus is coming again. Jesus is coming again. He's coming back for you and fire. So as I said, yesterday was the 15th of Av, and we celebrate it. It's the holiday of love. It's much older than St. Valentine's Day. So those of you that do chocolates or whatever you do for Valentine, um, you should have done it yesterday. It's the Jewish Valentine's Day. And at this time of year, the young Israeli woman would go out and dance in white in the fields. What a beautiful picture. And what these young women are saying is, young man, consider whom you choose to be your wife. There's so many beautiful pictures in many of these things that the Jewish people do that are so relevant to the scripture. A beautiful bride in white waiting for her husband. So called Tuba'av, it's the picture of the marriage of the Lamb of God. And so let's go to Revelation 19 verse 6, the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and the voice of mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigneth. Let us rejoice and be exceedingly glad, and let us give the glory unto him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And it was given unto her that she should array herself in fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. And he saith unto me, Right, blessed are they that are bidden to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Folks, are you bidden to the marriage supper of the Lamb? I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. There'll be no more tears in heaven, no more sorrow. We'll be with the lover of our soul. What an awesome, wonderful, great day that's going to be. So the next seven weeks till the head of the year uh, is very important. It, it foretells of the restoration of the Jewish people to their land, the ingathering of the exiles, which we've seen a lot of in the past. But is it still relevant is this biblical calendar relevant to the church today? Well, folks, I believe that the seasons of God are relevant. And that's why, as I, I believe the Lord was speaking to me about comfort my people at this time. Uh, it's the season of comfort. It's on God's calendar to comfort the people. So I'm speaking to you about comfort in the season of comfort. And so, as you sitting there watching this, and you thinking about all your problems, folks, understand that the season has changed, that it was Tishba, the, the time of sorrow, but that that time has now passed, and we've gone into the season of comfort and of love. It's very relevant. Well, then we better believe in this season for our own exiles, our unsaved families, our neighbors, restoration of all things. This is the season. But these things, folks, come about by faith. If you uh, have been struggling to have faith because it seems like you weren't getting answered, maybe it was in the wrong season. But now we are in the season of comfort. We're in the season where God wants to comfort you, and you need to stretch your faith again. You need to believe again. So before Tish B'Av, we had three weeks of daily readings of Jeremiah and Isaiah called the Weeks of Sorrow in the Haftarah. Now, uh, somebody might ask, what is the Haftarah? Well, folks, the Jewish people have a portion of reading that they do uh, every week. It's set out for them. 
And so they have the, the Torah, which is the books of Moses, which they read from. And then they also have the Haftarah, which is the prophets and the books like Psalms, the poets. Uh, it, it's all very beautiful readings. And so the Haftarah has had three weeks of sorrow, but that changed yesterday. Aren't you excited about that? So who has a favorite piece of roast chicken, for instance? Let's use that as an example. Or when you do a roast lamb, the little uh, poiki that comes with the lamb. Well, today I'm going to take a little titbit, a small piece of tasty food uh, from each of the seven weeks of comfort that we are in now. So for seven weeks... We're preparing for the head of the year, for the new year. And so there's Haftarah readings for seven weeks. And I've just taken a small portion out of each week to share with you a little tidbit, a, or could we call it a smorgasbord, because Jesus is the living bread. And smorgasbord means like different lovely sandwiches. And so... Uh, take each one of these weeks as a little lovely sandwich of eating of the living word, the living bread. So in this week that we are in now, week one, the sample that I took there out of the reading for the week is Isaiah 40 verse 1. And it says, comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Isn't that beautiful? Why twice? Why comfort ye, comfort ye? Why must it be twice? Because both temples were destroyed. And so, in other words, every calamity that you faced must be uh, met head on with comfort by the Holy Ghost. And so, uh, you've maybe had some challenges in your life. You've had some things happen over the last year that have just uh, disquieted you. But this morning the Lord says that I must bring you comfort with the Word of God because He wants to comfort every calamity in your life. Week 2, Isaiah 49 verse 14. But Zion said, Jehovah hath forsaken me and the Lord hath forgotten me. Can a woman forget her suckling child that she should not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yea, these may forget you. Yet will I not forget you. Folks, I want to tell you this morning, doesn't matter what you feel like, maybe in the last few weeks you've been feeling forgotten, you've been feeling it's a, just uh, readings of sorrow and days of sorrow, but you have not been forgotten by God. God knows who you are. He knows you by name. He knows every hair of your head. And then week three, Isaiah 54 verse 13 and all thy children shall be taught of Jehovah, and great shall be the peace of thy children. Folks, that's one of my favorite. It's a promise about my children. Me, Nikki Kriya, I've got two wonderful daughters, but I stand on the word of God for them. All my children shall be taught of Jehovah, and great shall be the peace of my children. Isn't that exciting? Take that verse for yourself. Make it your own. God is good. Week 4, Isaiah 51 verse 12. I, even I, am he that comforteth you. Who art thou? That thou art afraid of man that shall die, and of the son of man that shall be made as grass. Folks, we're so fearful of many things, just mere man. But God is saying, don't, don't be fearful of man. Um, I want to comfort you. You don't need to fear Mere man is what the word is saying. Week 5, Isaiah 54 verse 1. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more of the, are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith Jehovah. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thy habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes. Folks, when we get into 
a, a space of despair, discouragement, then we want to just reduce and, and try and maintain. God is saying, no, get out of that mindset. It's time to enlarge your tent. It's time to stretch forth the curtains of your habitation because he's getting ready to bless you. Week 6, Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of Jehovah is risen upon thee. Verse 2. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But Jehovah will arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Folks, we need this scripture. so It's so relevant for today. Because there is great darkness in the earth. But God is going to cause his church, his bride, this beautiful day that we celebrate of uh, remembering the, the love of a man for a woman, which is a picture of the love of Jesus for his church. Isn't God good? Even in this country, folks, at this very time, as I speak to you now, there's people plotting behind the scenes to try and destroy this country. But the time has come for the church to arise, for our light to shine, and for every plot to be uncovered and exposed, and the lies of the devil to be brought down. I pray it over our nation in Jesus' name. Week 7, Isaiah 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in Jehovah. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with the garland, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. For as the earth bringeth forth its bud, and as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord Jehovah will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations, not just South Africa, before all the nations. And so today I'm going to greatly rejoice in my God. I rejoice in Jehovah. Folks, this is the season that we are in now. And the Bible teaches me to ask for rain in the season of rain. Um, that's just good sense, you know. Uh, when you expecting rain, it's the season for rain, that's when you can really say, well, God, now we need rain to fill our dams, and God has been good to Cape Town that our dams are so full and we've had so much rain. But it just makes good sense. So, folks, for the next seven weeks, we are in the season where God wants to comfort His church. So I know that when God says to me, comfort my people, I'm in good company here because this is the season of seven weeks of comfort over the bride. And then as we come to the end of the Jewish year, the Hebrew year, we understand that that's the picture of the return of Christ. But in this season, it's the season for comfort. And so ask for comfort in the season of comfort. And so today I ask God, Comfort your people. And won't you pray with me? Say, Lord, comfort me in the season of comfort. It's just practical good sense. Psalm 30 verse 5, which I've already read to you, but I want to read it to you in the message now. He, that's speaking of God, he gets angry once in a while. Yes, he does. Because our sins are a stench before him. And I'm sure it... Uh, displeases him greatly but it goes on to say but across a lifetime there is only love the nights of crying your eyes out give ways to days of laughter folks as we go into the seven weeks now seven weeks if my math is good is 49 days i'm telling you we have 49 days well it's 48 days now because we're one day down 48 days of comfort and does the church not need comfort? I'm telling you, the things that are going on in the world, the lies, the fake news, there's so much fake news, you don't know what is true anymore, you don't know what to believe anymore. We hear such conflicting stories out of America, out of South Africa, out of many nations around the world. Things that are happening that we don't any longer know 
what to believe and it disquiets us and, and the situation in our own country of the pillaging and destruction of, of, of a nation. It disquiets one. It, it can cause depression and sadness and, and many things. But God says, this is the day of comfort for my church. I will comfort them. Like a chick gathers her hens, he wants to gather you. He wants to bless you. He wants to protect you. And you say, well, I've been believing God and it seems like it didn't work. But now, folks, is the season of breakthrough. Now is the season of a miracle because we are in the season of comfort where God wants to comfort you and I. And He will comfort you. And so, as we go through these next 48 days of comfort, my prayer is that you will sense the Holy Spirit, because who is the comforter? <laughs> There's only one real comforter in this world. He is the precious Holy Spirit of God, and He loves you, and He loves me, and He will comfort us. doesn't matter what goes on in the world. The comfort of God is enough to comfort you in any and every situation and every circumstance. And so right now, I pray the peace of God upon your very life. I pray the peace of God upon my life. I pray that everything that would come against you would be brought down in Jesus' name and that you'd be the head and not the tail and that God would elevate you and lift you up and bless you in the season of comfort. I speak comfort over the bride of Christ. And that I can only do by the Holy Spirit that indwells me because that is what He does, folks. He comforts us. And may you be comforted today. And may you be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And may God cause His face to shine upon you. May God be gracious to you and give you His shalom. Folks, we pray all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Thank you for watching and God bless you.